Hi everyone. We want to give you all a big warm welcome. We really hope you enjoy today's show. Psalm 105 tells us to proclaim God's goodness and tell the world of what he's done. And each week we try to do just that, proclaim his goodness. He has certainly done tremendous things in the lives of so many people, and we get to bear witness to just a few of them here on Heart Matters. In this show, we'll head to my hometown of Triton and hear from a lady who held on to her faith in God during the most gut-wrenching situations you can imagine. Listen in as Fern Windsor shares some of her story and how God has been her portion. Also joining us as today's musical guest, we're excited to have our own Dana Witt share a couple of songs with us. So let's get started with Dana's first song entitled, Christ Be Magnified. Enjoy.
Heart Matters will return in just a moment. Closed captioning provided by Terry's Tents, in business for 30 years, providing canvas fabrication, printing, embroidery, craft supplies, and more, located in Happy Valley Goose Bay. Looking for a quiet, clean, and economical place to stay in central Newfoundland? Emanuel Convention Center offers hotel and motel rooms, cabins, bunk rooms, and RV lots. We are a family-friendly site featuring nature trails, a playground, and sporting areas. Give us a call today. From envelopes to tractor trailer loads, Dooley's Trucking caters to all your shipping needs. Capable of meeting all your shipping requirements throughout Newfoundland. Dooley's Trucking is your choice for fast and efficient delivery. Ship with the best. Ship Dooley's. My name is Brandon Lee Mullet. I'm the owner here at Gander Appliance and Furniture, and I'd like to welcome you to our new showroom right here in Gander. We carry a wide variety of furniture brands, including Canadian-made Decorest, Canadel Dining, and a large variety of Ashley Furniture. We also carry major appliance brands such as Bosch, Maytag, and Whirlpool. Come visit us at 60 Armstrong Boulevard in Gander or 1 Fairview Street in Lewisport. My name is Fern Windsor. I live in Triton. I have lived there all my life. I was um, 18 when I got married. I was a plant worker, crab plant worker. I worked there for 39 years. All of my family is in Triton mostly. Life was really good for us. Ka Kathleen's uh, birthday was around that time. So she wanted to go spend uh, her birthday with her mom and grandfather's. So we did that. That's the same weekend she got her beginner's license, and I was the first one that took her out for driving. And I was so happy for her. She was always saying, Nan, you're gonna be the first one to take me a driving. The next weekend come, and uh, Kathleen called, Nan, can we come up again the weekend? And her favorite meal was cabbage rolls. They dearly loved my cabbage rolls. So that's what I had for supper. And uh, the weekend was good. My routine was to get up, get ready for church. And that's what I did. I went to church. And when I got back home, we got ready. And uh, I called their foster parents and let them know that we were leaving. So I said, Kaylee, I said, you got everything in your suitcase. Got your suitcase zipped up. Yeah, Nan, everything's ready. So I was all right, got everything in the car. And after they got in the car, I went back in the house and got my dog because she loved to, she loved to go for a ride, but she needed to be in the back seat. So she was in the back seat in the middle of the two girls. Perfect day, sun shining, roads were really dry. And uh, I do remember getting in the car, but I don't remember leaving our driveway. I don't remember leaving Triton or driving up through Pillars Island or even Rapses Arm. The next thing I do remember was uh, in St. John's, they had me in a induced coma for two weeks. There was a pastor in there. I don't know sure what his name was, but he came in. That pastor and the nurse that was looking after me and my sister was that came in. They told me that there was an accident. I was in the accident too, and I was the only one that survived. Uh, Sarah was dead, Kathleen and Kaylee died, and my dog, and uh, the funeral was over. I said, in a way, I'm glad that I don't remember it, because if I did, if I could see that car coming towards us, and there was nothing we could do, not a thing. It was too quick. The accident happened, um, there's a, a small turn before you get to the branch to go to Port Anson and Moss Cove, just before that. Often I wonder, I think it's about 
that day uh, if we had waited before, uh, after uh, we would have waited and uh, got gas on our way, it probably wouldn't have been us. For me, I had to lose three of my family and my two granddaughters. I mean, they were my world. Like, I, there's days I just pick up their picture and I talk to them. I talk to my husband. I mean, two of them would have been graduated now. Like, Kaylee, Kathleen, now she would have turned 20 now, November pass. And Kaylee would have, uh, March 13th. Kaylee would have been 18. I had a surgery from ear to ear, uh, cut open. The seat belts cut me on both sides. I had to learn to walk again. I couldn't walk. I had no damage to my legs, none whatsoever. But I still, I couldn't walk. She, the therapist, took me into a room with some steps. And I had to learn how to walk up and down steps again. Because in my basement, I got a lot of steps. I ended up walking with a cane after. They were decorating the hospital for Christmas. And from my room, there was a long hallway. And right at the end of that hallway, there was a Christmas tree, a huge Christmas tree. And the nurses used to say to me, uh, try and walk to the Christmas tree today. So the first day I, I tried it, I did. I made it to the Christmas tree once. So then the next day, they came in and they told me to do the same thing again. So I did it. Every day for a full week, I walked to the Christmas tree. But after the third day, I did it twice a day. Two of my sisters came in, spent some time with me there. My son and his wife came in. One of my brother-in-laws and his wife came in, and I had a few visitors from home, and there was people in Bay Roberts, like, just kin to me, so they used to come in and visit me. Nurses used to come in and say to me, uh, where are you going to live to now when you go home? I said, why would you ask me that? Well, she said, I figured you might live like with your daughter or your sisters or for a while. I said, no. I said, I'm going, I go home. I'm going into my own home. So on a Sunday, the doctor came in and he said, uh, do you think you could make it now if you went home? <laughs> I said, yeah. I said, you can send me home. So I got home care. I had home care for three years because I couldn't, uh, I couldn't lift nothing. I couldn't shower myself. I couldn't do anything. I did see the funeral because Pastor Wayne was there and he videotaped it for me. After a couple of years, I, uh, I watched it. Honestly, I don't know if I could have made it through this what I've got in my life. I would not be able to do it. I sat in my home and I watched that video by myself. It's just so surreal, like this rock bottom, I tell you. But for me, I don't know, God, God is, I know he's real. He got to be real for me to have to go through this. And he's been keeping me through this because I had to have a major surgery here on my side because where the seatbelt cut me, I had a huge hernia came out on my side like this. So last year in October, one day before my birthday, I had that surgery. And she said, you know, you're going to be in there before, you're going to be in the hospital for, for at least a week to 10 days. I said, okay. I said, sister, I said, you don't know me very well. I was in there for four days. I called my niece, she came pick me up. My daughter and her boyfriend came pick me up from out in Grand Falls. And I went home and she stayed with me for, for a week till I was able to get around right. Like I didn't do anything, I couldn't lift anything. So now I'm waiting now for another surgery on this side. And I got to have the same, same procedure got to be done. I would never got true if to infer all the friends that I have, you know, like my sisters were, were there for me night and day if I needed them. It's a hard thing to explain. 
Oh, I did get through it. He was with me all the time. Like, it was just, he gave me strength to do it. He had to have, he had to have given me strength to do it because I would never have done it on my own. I've had two shoulder replacements. I had just, the ball part of my shoulder here was out here when I, from the accident. So one evening I was making a salad for supper. I was in the kitchen peeling potatoes to make a salad for supper. I found a tingle right there in the mirror. I done this. First time I've had my arm up for four years. I said, oh my God. I said, you're performing miracles on me today because I mean, I never dreamed that I was ever going to be able to use that arm. I couldn't reach up to my cupboard like to get a mug or a cup or, or a plate or something like that. But now, when I want something up high now, I use this one. And I use this one to praise the Lord. Because if it weren't for him, I wouldn't be able to move it. That tingle was the Lord on me. Call upon God, because he's the only answer. He was my answer, and he can be yours too. People are at the core of what Heart Matters is all about. And you, our viewers, are the most important of all. That's why we'd love to hear from you. Why not stop by our website and let us know how the show has impacted you? Or maybe you know of someone who would be a great guest for the show. Either way, we'd love to hear about it. I also invite you to follow us on social media to stay in the loop of the week-to-week -week happenings here. Still to come in today's show, The Bottom Line with Mike Freak, and more music from Dana Witt, When Heart Matters Returns. Scott's Transport Limited is a family-owned and operated full transportation company located in beautiful Deer Lake. In business for over 25 years and with a fleet of modern equipment and dedicated team, we service the growing needs of businesses from Newfoundland and Labrador to Ontario and locations in between. If it matters to you, it matters to us. Remax would like to say thank you for allowing us to be a part of the most important transaction of your life. Our mandate is giving back to the communities that serve us. We will be honored to help you with your next move. Call any of our offices today and let one of our Remax agents go to work for you. Remember the days of fire drills? You know, you'd be sitting at school, at your desk, doing your work, then all of a sudden a fire alarm starts to go off and everyone gets really excited. I used to get excited because I got a break from doing schoolwork. You know, you'd all be assembled together in your class and you start to make your way outside and meet at a designated location. Do you know what that area is called? It's called the muster zone. Not mustard, muster. It's the place where you meet in case of an emergency. 
I recently went on my first cruise this past year, and in order for me to be allowed to participate in that cruise, I had to go through an emergency drill. I had to know exactly where I needed to go in case the alarm went off, in case there was an emergency. And I still remember. I had to go to my muster station that was on the sixth floor, letter J, I believe, at the rear of the boat next to the outside theater. That was my muster station. You'll actually see them around some towns, and we have a number of them here in Gander. You'll see them at the mall parking lot, in the Walmart parking lot, and next to some of the Tim Hortons. And my question is very simple today. What and where is your muster station? Where do you run to when there's an emergency in your life? When the alarm sounds and your life is all of a sudden thrown into a tailspin, where do you go? Where do you go when things are out of control? When you get that devastating news and when you're struggling and when the alarms are going off and you're instantly awakened to the reality that life will never be the same from this moment on, where do you go? Where do you run? Some people instinctively run to a trusted friend. Some people run to a professional for help. And there's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but what most people run to is what's familiar. Unfortunately, for a lot of people, their muster station is the familiarity of the bottle, and they find temporary comfort and reassurance there. Some people run to drugs, something to take the edge off. Some people run to relationships, some people run to money, only to discover that when the effects and the adrenaline wears off, they're right back to where they started. It's a temporary muster station that doesn't actually offer a permanent solution to the emergency in their lives. Jesus said for anyone who wants to find peace, hope, fulfillment, or comfort to run to him. And he, he offers an answer. He invites anyone whose life has suddenly taken a turn for the worst. For anyone who's struggling or searching or is in the middle of an emergency to come running to him. And you might be in a place right now where you are just going through life and everything seemed fine, but the alarm has gone off. And can I just tell you, be careful where you run because what you think you may need may be the very thing that adds to the turmoil of your life. Listen, running into the arms of Jesus is the certainty and assurance that you need today. And that's the bottom line.
the bridge of that last song said, the rain came and wind blew, but my house was built on you. I'm safe with you and I'm going to make it through. Those are powerful words to declare over ourselves. And that, my friends, is what faith is all about. It's trusting, it's believing. You know, when the rain came and the wind blew on Fern Windsor's life in the form of a devastating accident, she was able to stand because her house was built on Jesus. I want to thank Fern for being willing to share that intense story with us today. I'm so glad God is there when everything around us is crumbling. Also, a big thank you to Dana for singing those powerful songs for all of us. We pray that you build your life on the promises of Jesus. We know that trouble will come in this life, but boy, does it ever make a difference when you can face it while holding the steady hand of our Heavenly Father. Thanks so much for being with us today, and we'll see you all next time.